I looked in the book for the Crystal Radio kit, and one of the first things they mention is sanding and staining the wood. And that sounds like a good idea. I'll probably want to hang on to this kit. It looks real nice. We should have eight Phillips head screws, a five inch length of white, two and a half inch diameter PVC pipe. We've got a hundred foot of 18 gauge enamel coated wire. We have six fawn stock clips. We have a tuning capacitor with an extension shaft. We have a knob for the capacitor. We have a little piece of double sided foam tape. We've got one earphone, and I believe this is probably a high impedance earphone. We've got a piece of pine board. We've got seven feet of insulated stranded wire. We've got a 27K ohm resistor, and that's red, violet, orange, gold. And we've got a 1N34A germanium diode. There are a few tools and supplies we'll need to build the kit. First, we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll need long nose pliers. We'll need wire cutters. We'll need a tape measure or a ruler, a pen knife or an exacto knife, a small hammer, an Allen wrench that will fit the knob. We'll need some masking tape and some super glue. We won't need a soldering iron for this at all. According to the instructions, you should use a nail to drill some holes into the board. Going by the uh, template, that's included with the kit. Now, I'm going to use a drill on these because I want them to look a little nicer. So what I'll do is just take a punch here and I'll make a, uh, a little hole through to the board for everywhere that I'm going to drill. Phase two of the kit involves winding the coil. We're going to have approximately 66 turns of this wire, which will be about 52 feet. Now it's not important exactly the number of turns that you have. What is important is that we want to make the length of the coil two and a half inches long. That took a little while to do. I found the secret was uh, follow the instructions in the book, do a few windings first, get them on there good, then use a little super glue to tack them down. After that I was able to wind the rest of it fairly easily and when I got through I just ran a couple of beads of super glue down that to hold it together. And the coil is ready. That's probably the hardest part of the project. It's time to move to phase three of building the kit, and that is mounting the fan stock clips. Now it's time to mount the coil to the board. Off to phase four of the kit. On the left hand side of the coil, we'll need to remove the varnish off the end of the wire here. Now we can either do that with the exacto knife or we can use a piece of sandpaper. Now this is going to take a little while, but we want to go through all the steps in the book and make sure that we install the wiring in the correct position. Looks like our board wiring is about complete. The wire comes off the left hand side of the coil, goes to this clip, comes around, loops under this clip, and goes out. The wire from the right hand side of the coil comes all the way down to the bottom clip, loops across it, comes under this clip, and then out. And then there is one jumper wire between the earphone and the detector right here. Now these are not connected right here, that's just one passing over the other. Our next step is to take the 27K ohm resistor and put it across the speaker clips. A resistor has no polarity, so it doesn't matter which end goes to which clip here. However, a diode is polarized. We take the germanium diode, we'll put the cathode side of the diode into the detector clip that goes to one of the speaker clips. 
The cathode is the side of the diode that has a line on it. And there we go. Now according to the instructions that come with the kit, you should twist these wires around these posts. And if you don't have a soldering iron, that's a good way to do it. I may have mentioned earlier that we wouldn't be using any solder this time. Well, I lied. <laughs> I'm going to use a little solder on this uh, capacitor here. So we're going to put on the knob now. And we've turned it all the way counterclockwise. Let's loosen up the little uh, Allen screw that's in here. Or some people call it a hex screw, I guess. And we'll tighten it up, putting the knob at approximately the 9 o'clock position. Okay, so it looks like it goes from about 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Remember the um, stranded wire that came with the kit? Well, that is going to be hooked to the ground clip. And that'll run to my ground system over here. I've, I'm a ham radio operator, so I do have a ground system in here. And it's an 8-foot rod that runs down on the ground right outside the uh, building here. If you don't have something like that, you could hook it to a cold water pipe as long as it's metal. Uh, PVC obviously wouldn't work. Or you might hook it to uh, a radiator system in a building. Uh, whatever you can find that will uh, get you into the ground. If, if you can't actually get a, a pipe or a rod that's run in the ground, you can just lay some wire out across the ground and that will work as well. We've got our ground wire connected. Uh, we've got the little uh, high impedance, what is this? It says receiver on it. <laughs> the little earplug. And we're going to hook that to the uh, two clips over here on the right hand side of the board and now we're about ready to start listening to glorious AM radio one thing left that's the antenna and we had a good bit of this uh, enamel coated wire left and that can be used as the antenna or we can run another wire uh, 30 feet or so outside would probably be good if you want to run more than that that's even better And now our antenna is connected. So, let's turn on the power. Well, there is no power. It's uh, powered by the radio signals coming out of the air. If you enjoy Amateur Logic Shorts, please click the like button. Be sure to click subscribe to be notified when new episodes become available. And let your friends know about this video by clicking share.